and welcome everyone to the second best of three of tonight's after hour gaming leagues tournament we are going to be watching a match played between microsoft one and capital one blue microsoft one is currently a team that's been undefeated so far throughout this entire season capital one blue equally as strong haven't had as much luck as microsoft but let's see if they can take a game off the former champions today i'm joined by my co-caster crick chronicle war I don't know your last name. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Catalyst. Catalyst. That's uh, right. He's Catalyst. It. Wow. <laughs> that, that is an interesting name, actually. Don't even doubt yourself, man. You totally got it down. <laughs> that is an interesting. Yeah, right on. So, well, they, thank you. I picked it myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, so yeah, we we have a uh, on the blue side. Uh, Microsoft One are gonna be playing for Charity Water. Uh, charity Water is a charity that uh, builds clean water infrastructure in parts of the world that uh, don't have easy access to clean water. I know I've mentioned. Uh, in previous casts, of course, uh, my favorite thing about that charity is, you know, it appeases the gamer in me. It's a very uh, efficiency sort of thing. Like, there's no reason you should have to walk for miles to get enough water to start your day. So actually building more local sources of clean water for people in parts of the world is just super helpful for those communities overall. So fantastic charity. Thing. Yeah. And speaking, you know, and speaking of charity water, I believe uh, last year, I believe the Google, do the Google donation um that went to charity water they actually built an earth um water fountain like a water well a earth well that's in awesome. in nepal i didn't know that yeah it was built oh, in nepal that's great. yeah all right on that's great hopefully we can get something awesome like that again maybe we can get the shrine from the uh second uh, second round of earth from the <laughs> intro the login screen that yeah awesome. yeah um and on the red side of course uh capital one blue they were playing for women who code that is a a uh, group dedicated to helping women break into the tech industry uh, by building networks with other successful women in that field and providing technical assistance to newcomers. So, you know, unfortunately, that's a field that has been very male dominated, uh, not based on merit, just based on country. That's how it evolved usually and culturally in America. So, it's a great group they're trying to work to uh, level that playing field a little bit, make sure everybody's uh, valued based on merit, get people back in there, break that glass ceiling. So, two great charities from both sides here. Uh, but without further ado, let's go right into analyzing this pick van face because boy, we've got some tasty picks. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I gotta say, like, starting it off, we have the Kogma ban, and you you can easily tell that was taken towards Agri. So he's been playing a lot of Kogma, and he's definitely pretty dominating on that champion. And meanwhile, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and then there's the standard Irelia ban towards Ibne. He is so strong on that champion that i don't i believe he's only played it uh a number of times a number of times that i can actually count on my hand i've seen him play the area i've only seen him play it like twice and i believe he's only gotten it about under 10 times this entire tournament yeah but it certainly has been banned more times than that against mm. <laughs> oh yeah definitely definitely and, you know, I'm, I'm surprised to see that we're not seeing any bans going towards Silent J. Because in the past weeks, I've seen at least one ban towards him, be it, be it a Nami ban, a Jano, or a Braum ban. And said they're leaving him wide open. He actually goes for something that I haven't really seen him play a lot. It's going to be the Morgana. So it'll be fun to see how he plays it. I always, I, I find that he's, he's aggressive when he needs to be, but he's, he's also capable of playing passively. He's like the yeah, perfect. Absolutely. He's, he's always, like the perfect lane partner. Yeah, he seems to adapt very well to the situation on the ground. And you know, uh, when we've seen bands in the past go towards Silent J, uh, his champ pool is very deep. Like just as you were saying, there, there's three or four champions that he's very proficient on, and you only have three bands. So if you're really going to try and ban somebody out, he's not really the most effective person to ban against because he can so consistently perform on a number of champions. So I'm actually a little pleased to see him ignored here in the ban phase. Uh, and try and focus those bands on to other power picks that uh, might be of concern there. The Sejuani, the Aurelia, actually Hello, freeing up some more of their bands. Yeah, Hello, Blanc as well. Yeah, and you know, speaking of the little Blanc in the mid lane, we're gonna be seeing a Corky mid lane. It seems like against the Azir. Now, I don't know about bringing the cleanse against this team. I I don't. I feel as though it's not gonna be as effective as something like a heal or a barrier, even ignite might be better because there's just not a lot of lockdown there's the leona and then there's the vi one of them 
is going to be able to get onto you fairly easily. The other one's going to have a difficult time. And that one's the Leona. If she tries to go in, you effectively use Emperor's Divide, and she can't get there. Vi does have his, her ultimate, and but even then, you will be knocked up, but she'll be behind the wall when you're knocked up. It's a really weird interaction, but it makes sense. Yeah. And you know, that cleanse might in part be, uh, if they're expecting some sort of lane swap scenario to come out here, they uh, might be taking that cleanse initially because of a uh, early roam from Leona, level 2 roam from her, uh, to the mid lane before Vi will then hit 6 and then have all of her CC to try and lock him down. So he might be able to effectively use that in lane. But these aren't two bottom lanes that I would expect to be swapped. I think this will probably be a head-to-head -head matchup here. It, both sides, I mean, I can see both sides being confident heading into this. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see standard lanes come out this game. But uh, if, they're, if they have something like that anticipated, that could be a reason for taking uh, cleanse in what is a matchup that it shouldn't really be the most effective in. So we are in to this game. We're getting in. It's going to be Microsoft One on Blue Team and Capital One Blue on Red Team. That's going to be really confusing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it'll make sense in game two when they swap. But uh, <laughs> no, it's not. It's going to be insane. <laughs> and I, the, uh, I just realized I spelled Capital. I spelled Capital wrong. Oh, and nice smile. Yeah. <laughs> I, I English words. Yeah. <laughs> I used I used O smile. at the end instead of an A. <laughs> Capitol. <laughs> yeah. But I fixed it. It's okay. I only looked dumb for a moment. <laughs> it's okay. We've archived it in infamy now, so you'll you'll forever be dumb for a moment. <laughs> You know, I like uh, seeing that Sand Soldier using that for a little bit of extra vision from Azir there for a little scouting. That's uh, a nice play. I like seeing that. Uh, if you're going to take those Sand Soldiers first, well, <laughs> you're going to take those Sand Soldiers first is what I mean to say, so you might as well use them. We have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, um, so, there's one more champion that didn't really have a choice. Uh, Zillion, that's, that's, it is. that's what it is. Zillion doesn't have a choice in what he can get. He has to get bombed. Poor Zillion Hard way or... No mm. freedom. Oh, wait, no. Um, we do oh, see the uh, a... full sustain. You can take speed boost as well, but I guess that's not like not worth it anymore. Yeah, but who would take that? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can only lose the bomb. Yeah. Um, but we do see in Corky, before we uh, get into these lanes, I do just want to mention briefly, Corky is opting for that full sustain start here in the mid lane, so uh, probably more of a, uh, either a passive lane, or he's going to be relying very heavily on those foster spawns to kind of shut that up as much as possible. Oh man. But, oh, so right over the shoulder of Lucian. Yeah. Finding. Really, um, that was really close by Silent J. If it had hit, then that would have been a really devastating um, bottom lane. Level 2, not hit just yet. Imagine when it's level 2, the um, explosion that's going to be happening right there. Both of those uh, 80 carries are rushing for that moment. And once that last minion goes down, it's going to be level 2 hit by the red team first. Marcus, uh, Capital 1, not going to go in just yet. Silent J looking for a binding, just going to be side -step. Beautiful dash there from Lucian. Yeah, and there's the Zenith blade as well. Cross JJ not going to have it connect, so they will not be able to go in just yet. But Zelibur's caught out by the Dark Binding. Hijaxi, though, will not bind. be able to continue going in. Yeah, unfortunately, the ADC9 position to follow up with some uh, additional damage. So, uh, very good point by the game. You see a little bit of uh, fighting going on in the mid lane. Uh, really Just some poke going down onto each other. No summoner cells have been popped. Just yet. Oh, the smites have been popped. They are summoners. <laughs> yeah. But, um. Oh. So far, even actually going in really far, takes a couple of, well, it takes one tower hit against William Brasky right there, but he does actually end up winning that out. He has a sustain from his passing, and Zelibur is cutting in by another Dark Binding. And to go in, Xenoblade going down onto Silent J, an immediate Dark Binding going to keep him, Black Shield going to keep him alive. 
I'm very impressed with the, the response from the solution. Whenever he gets funny, he immediately dashes as soon as it uh, wears off. He dashes in and tries to get some follow-up damage to win the trade afterwards. And he's been doing a very effective job thus far. Uh, this blue side really needs to start taking that into account and be ready for some uh, follow-up uh, re-engage to try and capitalize on that tendency. Yeah, Hydroxy's more uh, content with just farming up. Hasn't really been using the Buckshot to poke too much after Silent J gets that Dark Binding. But later on, he will be scaling. The burst is just going to be absolutely insane. And Cross JJ can't really find anything in this lane. It's going to be really difficult against the Morgana. The Black Shield kind of just messes you up. Can't really lock down anyone with that. And I would not be surprised to see... Silent J max the Black Shield second just to prevent Leona from popping it with Zenith Blade later on. Yeah, that's a good point. We might see. We'll have to pay attention to how those levels are taken. Uh, definitely, we're going to be more of a utility uh, position for this Morgana here, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that coming up. Yeah, and they're just going to back away. Lucy and low on mana. No, they know that they can't fight this. And unfortunately, Yururu, he was looking for a gank, but he's not going to be able to find anything just that he's wasting. He's spending a lot of time right there. And there's Cross JJ going out to Silent J, but he can't get the stun off onto anyone. Yururu coming in. Can't get the follow-up knock -up. He's going to go in. The heal was just used by Zelda. Not going to get that support to die, but he actually does get this kill. Now, Thurston, he's there to follow it up. Both of the supports are going to fall. Unfortunately, Silent J was the one to take the kill on to Cross JJ. Yeah, that last tick of Ignite being exactly what they needed to finish off that kill, but so unfortunate that Vi was there for the counter gank immediately afterwards. And that's just gonna be a kill going on. And they're gonna continue this fight. There's the body slam stopping. Whoa, no, what is happening? Thirstman left alone against the Grizz. Yururu leaving his AD carry to die right there. He's gonna have a barrel to get the follow up kill, but. I, I, I think Hydraxy's kind of confused as to what just happened right I think we're all confused as to what just happened right there. Yuru body slammed Vi, and the CC from the body slam lasted long enough to where her Q timer ran out. And then Gragas flashed over the wall thinking that the Q was still up, so he was no. going to block the Vault Breaker, but it wasn't. So she stayed over there and was able to just auto down Graves. Body so slam. almost made it out of there scot free. Body slam cancels Vault Breaker. If you're if you're if you're if you're knocked up or uh, knocked back when you're channeling Vault Breaker, it's canceled. Silent J taking a lot of minion aggro. He's gonna be stunned up, and this may be a kill. Ignite's gonna be ticking. Can he survive? Heal's not available for Hydraxy, and Silent J able to survive. Here's the teleport. Gonna be completed by Emei. They're gonna go straight on to Zelibus. Can they get the kill? He's gonna be trying to run away, and it looks as though this kill gonna go over to Ibne. Not close enough to that wall to dash through. He tried it, but couldn't make it. Just wasn't in range. Made it out, did Morgana with 60 hit points in that. The biscuit immediate hit point uh, return, saving her life there. So far, Microsoft One really showing up there. That bottom, especially, is extremely aggressive against the Leona losing. You would think that would be the aggressive pair, not the Graves Morgana. They'd probably wait till a little bit later on before they look for these fights. Dark the combination of Leona passive plus the double hit from Lucian wins trades fairly easily for them, but they're just not scared of that power instead. Facing it head on and winning it out a lot of the times. Yeah, and right now, after this round of backs, there is a slight advantage going over to that Graves. He does have those boots completed over Lucian, so he will be able to try and dodge around that Leon. Oh man! But in the Aggregate! Lane, gonna be Valkyrie away and knocked back by these Fuzzle Cats. Here comes Thurston as well. Emperor's Divide knocking that Vi away, and he should be able to survive. There's Aggregate though! In those Sand Soldiers. Attack range, no flash used by him, and he does have Missile Barrage to clear the wave up. And Draxy, the burst damage from the Buckshot is going to be doing a lot of damage. It was nerfed uh, last patch, but it's still an extremely strong spell. It's just, 
it just does less damage if you don't hit multiple um, shots of it now. So far. Yes, these are fairly even across the board. No one has a clear lead just yet. It's all about the kills and where they have gone. Two kills onto Thirstman. So far, one kill each onto the top jungle and support of Microsoft One. And there's Zelliverse going in with a relentless pursuit. That was a pretty dangerous call if Silent J only had Dark Binding up. Yeah, Vi actually opting to go for the Chilling Smite, uh, trying to chase people down and actually get that consistent damage from uh, her passive on her W there to really break down some people uh, that she can find out here. So we're going to be looking for Vi to have a lot more of uh, ganks coming forward in which she can skirmish around and really fight that out. Oh man, Cross AJ caught up by the Dark Binding, but that's still Leona. They can't exactly burst her down very easily. and. Meanwhile, in that mid lane, we did just witness some poke going down by Agrius, but Hydraxy taking a lot of damage. Cross JJ wants to go in. There's a slow shackle. Gonna be finding two members, and the sun is only gonna be finding Cross JJ. Silent J still alive in the dark pine, and gonna be finding Cross JJ. He's going down to Hydraxy. Can Zelvers stay alive here, Rue? There's the explosive cast. Nas getting Zelvers away from safety. There's the ward going over the wall, and you Rue will be finding a kill with an auto attack. Beautiful cast there initially to land the slow to make sure he stayed in ult range and couldn't get to that wall in time to dash over. Oh man, I'll get back to that because William Braxy, his hop was cancelled by the Arcane Smash of Ebene and that was just a huge trade being won by the Malkai in the top lane right there. Yeah, unfortunately that trade going down before the Narbar was filled and now that it's filled he's actually low enough to where he's going to play back here. <laughs> oh man, there's been... <laughs> Yeah, Ru, Ru. he's just gonna waste his time. Nope, he's just gonna let it happen. Okay, I thought he was gonna waste his time. He was spotted out by a warden. Agrius walking in. The pink one actually didn't spot him out, and, I, I guess. Knocking away, but he can't do anything. That's the lid for his ride. Knock him away from safety. Yururu taking another kill. Come on, man. Give a kill over to the mid lane. Brosef needs some love. Beautiful restraint there from Yururu though to not go in <laughs> to disrupt the back to actually wait so they felt that that brush was cleared so Corky would walk right into it face first with no vision and then all of a sudden there's a fat man right in your face body slamming you locking you down. Yeah. Oh man, Zelda's caught up by the dark binding. He's not gonna take too many tower hits because the minions were still there. But that is Silent J. He actually does end up going back right now. Hydraxy going to be in that 2v1 for a small amount of time. And actually, Thirstman starting up on this dragon, he may just be able to take it. No one on Microsoft One is in a position to stop it from happening. I don't think they even know it's happening. Um, Hydraxy making his way there, probably just putting a war down over the wall. They should have been able to get an approximate time, so let's see if they can take the second one or prepare for the second one. Yeah, definitely a bit of a consolation prize here, uh, out rotating for that dragon as this early game is largely going in favor of the blue side here. Six to two in the kills, nearly three uh, and a half k gold lead here, actually a little bit over that. Um, yeah, so far. Um, CS leads still not showing themselves. These teams are dead even. I would be happy for either of these teams to make it onto the finals. We do see though Silent J looking for something and with Yuru there as well, they're looking for some form of regression. They don't have a bottom lane tower to fall back on, so Capital One Blue gonna have to play a little bit safer. And the roam coming out from the rest of Capital One. There's the Flash Solo Flare. Gonna try and find Hydraxy, but not enough. Silent J locked down. Bodhi's holding better. He's taking a lot of damage. Soul Shock was being charged. It's not gonna find a stun. There's been so low, but he's still gonna end up falling to Hydraxy. One kill going over Agrius. Really aggressive onto that tower. There's a lot of damage. Hydraxy is gonna fall, but it's a double kill to Agrius. 
fantastic play by the Vi there. As soon as she saw the black shield thrown down on Graves to immediately ult that Morgana to make sure she punishes her. And she does so and that results overall in a 3 for 1. Great play there. Yeah, even now, Ebay gonna be finding William Braxy. He's just gonna be able to hop over that wall. Meganar will not be showing himself just yet. Man. That's gonna so cute. Put the playing box on top of each other as you go back. It's just like, what's, 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 what's that to like about that skin? And then when you're in Meganar, your backing, your backing animation is you, you, you're. You're literally you know, taking the plane down. Yeah, exactly. You're taking a helicopter <laughs> down. No. There's the tower being put down by Brosef right there just to give himself a bit of extra CS. I don't think he's going to be able to take that cannon, man, unfortunately, though. Yeah, very unfortunate time to throw down uh, that turret because he was immediately leaving it to go get that blue buff. So it was actually just some free local gold going over to that Lucian and Fort here. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he planned planned it out for the blue buff to spawn at that point, but he didn't want to delay it any longer. And they're actually going to be going in. Here comes the gank from Yuru. They're trying to follow up, but they're a little bit too far. and. Agri is forced to Valkyrie away. Silent Jade looking from the backside. They're going to find him. He's locked down and a kill going over to Yururu. And here comes the Thurston and William Braxy trying to escape the wrath of Microsoft. One, well, four members are there. Here's the fifth Hydraxy looking to start this fight up again. Brosev going in and he's not able to get the Emperor's Delight. But a nice start finding fine Zelibus and it's a kill going over Hydraxy. Solifer was just used but it's not going to be enough to save the AD carry's life. That's going to be a 2 for 0 in favor of Microsoft 1. All the credit there to Silent J right as that Lucian was almost out of combat. The very tip of that Dark Binding lands and immediately there's enough uh, and a reaction from the rest of the team to throw out all the damage they have and get to kill. Yeah. Oh man, Silent J not able to get that Dark Binding, but it's okay. They've done enough work. They've taken, t they've taken a couple of kills and they've gone on to the Graze. He's going to be so powerful. As this game progresses, Infinity Edge completed by him and Berserker's Grease as well. He's just gone back. Let's see what he picks up. It's the Strying Orb. And the components of his game. Yeah, very unfortunate too for Forky. About 53 gold short of the Trinity Force. He has all the components here. Um, so he's actually going to be a little bit behind. He's actually going to go back right now just to complete that up and grab the King for it. Yeah. So, power spikes being completed, uh, power spikes being hit all around, Graves, the Corky, even the Azir, just put the Umbrella and Namacon, it's going to be so nice. Um, I will return, actually, got to be back, unfortunately. Okay, I do want to uh, point out as well, this uh, Malkite we see right here, going for the Rod of Ages instead of the Righteous Glory, already at half stacks here, he's certainly going to be able to be a much larger force here, though a bit less utility for his team to engage, so if we can see the Grogus and his uh, Morgana continuing to land good engagements uh, later on, that shouldn't be too much of a factor, uh, though of course the Twitch Advance, as we see here, always going to be a bit more to engage as well. A good fight back and forth. We actually see the Nar in the turret, but the last hero that is there to tank that final turret shot to make sure that trade goes in their favor. And looks like Scuttle Crowd here is going to be picked up with 30 seconds till Dragon. Vi actually going to Vault Breaker away from that binding. Good uh, dodge there. As we see Xeer clearing out the pink board, playing that Vision Denial game. Throwing down a pink of their own as again, oh, just barely missing the binding there on the Corky. As the fat man is going after Vi, there's the follow up from Azir as well. She's actually Emperor's divided over the wall, but she's still gonna go down there and Lucian, forced to immediately dash away. Doesn't want any of that. Morgana, flash Q to try and catch them, forces the Valkyrie. Actually, is gonna throw down her ultimate. That bush was warded, so Morgana's not gonna be able to survive the Corky, but Corky will go down, and now that is two members down. This should be an uncontestable dragon as the smite is gone from the red. Here. Yeah, sorry about that. That was my grandma. Um, you have enough family. Get your priorities straight. 
<laughs> oh my god. But she's giving me dinner. Like. <laughs> oh, well, if it's a dinner, Grandma, that changes everything. <laughs> well, William Brax in the top lane, just gonna be hopping over that tree. Man, how high can he hop to, to jump over a Maokai? Man, like. <laughs> yeah. Either Maokai is like a sap Maokai is literally a sapling or Nar like has the hops. <laughs> he he's literally he has better hops than me. He's literally Michael Jordan. <laughs> I don't know, he's like the only basketball player that like I know that can like jump high. Jump. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, effectively so. My my knowledge in other sports are limited, except for esports. <laughs> Yeah, I'm largely an esports fellow myself. Basketball, you dribble, right? That's yeah, that, that, that's it, right? that's the that's the sport where you kick it into the field goal, right? Yeah, it's sports ball. I just believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so twenty minutes into this exact, and it looks as though uh, Microsoft One did indeed take the first dragon for themselves after they lost the first after they lost the first dragon of the game to. Capital One Blue. Um, components of components of what looks to be a Phantom Dancer in uh, Hydraxi's uh, inventory. So once that's completed, it's gonna be. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Sorry. Cough. Oh. Oh, no worries. It seems like uh, with that needless large rod completed on the zero two. Any skirmishes that break out of this point are certainly be, uh, going to be going in the favor of the blue side here. They have hit uh, really key buys uh, when they went back, so they're going to bring a lot of power to any skirmishes that break out. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like there's anything too important to be set up as far as fights may go, but uh, with that Gragas being deep in the enemy jungle right now, we might see something break out right here by the red buff. Yeah, Cross AJ and Agri is finding out Yuru. He should be able to get on this wall with the body slam. Oh man, William Braxton and Agri, they really want this. The Baron has been started and it's gonna work in Farley for Microsoft One. Silent J, on the other hand, has been taken down by Zelebris right there. But man, good guy Baron getting a kill onto Agri. They weren't really able to follow up after that, but they still get one kill. Two for one. Yeah. In favor of Capital One. Definitely going too far deep into the enemy jungle there without as much rewards. They did lay down some vision once they were already there, but apparently, unfortunately, that's too late, and that's gonna cost them a little bit of their lead here. Two for one overall in that trade. Not what they wanted to see here coming out of the blue side. Yeah. So far. Mm. It looks as though, okay, so Corky is actually going to be going AP. He's, I, I thought he was going to be like hybrid, um, but he's actually going full AP. Uh, I, 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 I agree with the Trinity Force actually, because it gives you a lot um, more mid-game presence. You, yeah, like, absolutely. If, if you that gone, power spike must be respected. Yeah, if you had, if you had just gone with the straight loot and Echo. His power would have been as strong as it is right now. He, it'd be pretty powerful, but now with the Trinity Force and then the Ludens, he gets like they have to they have to like build. It's tough to build against him already because he does a lot of AD and AP. But now they made it even harder by going Trinity Force and now Ludens. He's really like making them decide what are they what are they scared of more, the, his AD damage or AP damage. Yeah, absolutely. Who's going to be more of a force here? Is it going to be Lucian or is it going to be Corky? Who do you, who do you want to respect in this matchup here? Yeah, it looks like so far Corky definitely needs to be affected, but Silent J going oh, solo, going to flash out. Yeah, Hydraxi signed up by the Sulfur, but Silent J taking a lot of damage. He's able to survive so far in evening. Going to be swept into safety by William Brasky right there. Meanwhile, on the sidelines, Brosef and Yururu. Looking to follow up, but no casualties so far. Barely making it out with their lives intact here. Those blinking red health bars. That could mean the top lane for zoning down here. The Emperor's just like going to use to try and zone them away and effectively so. Possibly save this turret. And they're trying so hard to take this. Meanwhile, 
Thirstman in the mid lane looking to maybe take two towers, one on top and one in mid. But there is Ibne in the mid lane to stop that push from happening. And Brosef making his way back right now. Hydraxi still in that top lane, but he's out of mana. And that looks like it will successfully be both turrets defended here by the blue side. Great player. It did cost them the Emperor's Divide at the start, but certainly worth it to prevent that global gold from going out to the red side here and starting to even up this gold disparity, which now remains around 5k in favor of the blue side. Yeah. There is the zeal items being included by both of those ED carries. Looks as though Zelibus actually went for the static shift, so bit more of a mid-game impact when you um to help with hydraxi's uh, mid-game power spike and hydraxi on the other hand went for the phantom dancer so he's gonna have a bit more of a late game impact with that item and oh man william praxi still caught up by the dark binding the collateral damage didn't connect but yiru with an ice composer task brings thirstman into the backside and he's gonna be taken down there's cross jj going very far on to Hydraxi, but it's not gonna matter. That's a double kill already onto Brosef and Yuru still in these fights. There's a triple kill for Brosef. Can he get a quadra? Can Abby Swan? It's gonna be a quadra kill to Brosef. Absolutely Pen fantastic play. Who's the scrub that took the pentakill? Who is? It? <laughs> I will, I am mad. I am mad for you, Brosef. Even in meanwhile in the top lane pushing that. It was Ebene, wasn't it? That's why he's all the way over there. He doesn't want. He doesn't want to feel um, Brosef's raft right there. <laughs> well, and you know, if that Azir wasn't already online, he certainly will be now. Already, the Morello Nomicon and Death Cap completed before that. Now with a Quadra kill to go back on. I mean, that's uh, already a 1,900 gold in his inventory right now, ready to spend immediately after that engagement. So now this Azir is going to become those nightmare Azirs of legend. Yeah. And then you have Yururu. He's six two and eight, and he's effectively unkillable. He was he's been he was taking up effectively off all five members of Capital One Blue and that last team fight, and he got down to just under half health. It is going to be really difficult to take him down, and then there was just no no one on Capital One Blue actually went in on to. Um, Hydraxi in that fight. They let him do all the damage that he wanted to. Granted, Brosev was the one that was doing the majority of the damage, but Hydraxi cannot be underestimated. Yeah, absolutely, and it's always nice to see when uh, your tank jungler does take those initial kills in the game, to see him throw himself recklessly into the team to tank up as much as possible, because you know, it's very hard to just ignore someone who literally body slams into your face. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you don't choose to ignore him, you're going to burn all of your cooldowns on him for nothing. He has a mid lane here. Wow, oh, so much damage. Yeah, Agri is able to survive with the Valkyrie. But meanwhile, Yuru is on the sidelines. He's looking for an explosive cask to catch someone out. That tower is going to be taking a lot of damage. And with the Azir turret on the backside, they have a really easy way to fall back on. And that's the flash! And a nice explosive cast gonna be finding a kill onto, I guess, William Brassi falling as well. Hydraxi locked down by the bio kill, but that's gonna be an immediate double kill for Brosef. Triple kill for Brosef past the Emperor's Divide. And this will be almost an ace, not quite, for Microsoft One, but they're gonna be pushing down in this mid lane. The inhibitor tower falls, and the inhibitor falls as well. And meanwhile, if you look at the top lane, there's a huge mini wave making its way to that position as we speak. Even tagging up that tower for his team. And with the minions there as well, they're going to be taking the top inhibitor tower. And maybe even the top inhibitor. Zelibur's not going to be able to do too much. They're going to have to let it fall. And you know, that last team fight, it was exactly what we were talking about going into that. With that immense power spike that came, with this advantage to get those items, nearly a few items, an item entirely completed ahead of some of their counterparts here are the blue side. So any fight that breaks out is going to go as in favor as that last one did. And now 
able to capitalize it as the fight broke out so close to their base by their inhibitors to get two inhibitors. I mean, if you want to talk about a base being cracked wide open, that's that's what just happened here. Yeah, right now, very little that they'll be able to do. So far, 21 kills to Mike on Microsoft One compared to the eight of Capital One Blue. It's looking really bleak for Capital One Blue right now. And this is kind of the point where they have to talk about what actually happened wrong in this game and how they can fix it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, uh, it, it's got to come down to uh, what, what those rotations were early game by, of course, a very heavy early game impact came from four of those tanks. And, you know, we just didn't feel uh, the pressure coming out throughout this early game from that Vi really snowballing her lanes ahead. If you're going to have that Corky who ends up trying to go for Loon's Echo, I mean, we're t 30 minutes into the game, Corky still doesn't have that Loon's Echo completed. You know, if she, if she, if they, if that was the team composition they were going to, we really needed to see Vi get in to get that Corky online, get him rolling to where those single ultimate shots into the group of the team can just do shattering amounts of damage. Yeah, Ible continue with this split push shenanigans. Gonna be able to get that bottom lane second tier tower for his team. Total of eight towers on Microsoft One compared to the one of Micro uh, compared to the one of Capital One Blue. They're taking a free Baron at this point. Only Hydraxi, Sonic, and Yuru are there. I mean, everyone else is just providing some sort of um, impact elsewhere. Ime looks as though he's, he's going to be taken down, but his sacrifice is worth it. If his team got a Baron, and they can just take whatever they want at this point. They're going to be making their way to Dragon number three for them, maybe. Up in 40 seconds. That's the flash from Thirstman. Doesn't really want to get... Locked down by Silent J's Dark Binding. Yeah, and you know, great uh, fearlessness from Ebene to just continue pushing up that lane until he knew that Baron was secured. Uh, the Baron, of course, by far the more important thing than a single kill at this point in the game. So just fearlessly pushing to that inhibitor, demanding that the red side come answer him or they lose their final inhibitor or at least their final inhibitor turret as well and risking a, a pot, potential baron steal for losing your entire base definitely not worth it so sacrificing himself to get his team essentially a free uncontestable baron gotta respect that team coordination and that team play now right now baron number four will be going over to microsoft one and they're going to be able to do that. And now, at this point, it's just pick a lane and push it out. That Baron buff is halfway done. So this may be the only push they get off of it. So they're going to have to make it count. But I, I think they've already made it made this entire game count. They're really showing us why they are the number one team in this league. Yeah, absolutely. And those super minions streaming into the base on both top and middle now. Absolutely already at knocking on the front door of the top lane now going past the dead inhibitor. They're not gonna be able to- Oh man, Thurston very on. far out! Pro step gonna be the target, but he's gonna be able to revive. Meanwhile, Silent J with the beautiful soul shackles gonna be finding the sun onto cross JJ and he is taken down by Pro Sep. And now Hydroxy just going completely insane. He's still taken down even though not enough to keep him alive, but a double kill will be finding its way onto Bro Sep. William Brasky. He's the one, he's the last one to fall, and this is going to be Microsoft One winning game one of ten, of game one of tonight's best of three between Capital One Blue. And man, what a performance. Yeah, Capital One Blue gonna be on the back for now. It's do or die for them if they wanna keep their final hopes alive. They need to win these next two semifinal matches or they're out. All right, so we will return for game two of this best of three. Hope you guys stay tuned. Yeah, absolutely. And before we get out of here, I just want to review very quickly here. Again, that is here. 10, 0, and 6. We question the cleanse summoner spell pickup, but I don't question anything about that is here anymore because that, that, that game was absolutely insane. When we look at the damage output for that is here, 21K 
Ward than uh, actually Lucian almost equal that Lazier perhaps that might be a very key note as well Lucian four five and four and what was a devastatingly one-sided game Lucian actually might be a very high priority coming into game two here as well for uh, picking away from this red side for taking it out of Capital One's Blues hands because if that you can perform that well on Lucian to almost be on par with Azir from that game well then that Lucian's got to be answered in uh, game two here so we'll see how that pick goes out as we Get into game two.